advised. You are entering United Colony space. Please maintain course and prepare to be scanned. We say again, respond immediately. I've got special orders. You're coming with me. Stand down and prepare for immediate transport to our vessel. Smart decision. Stand by to be boarded and transferred. I'm telling you, the Commander's got plans for this loser. Why else would he be going through all this trouble? I still don't understand why he trusts the criminal. Seems like too much of a risk. Stop worrying and keep an eye on our guest. I'll be right back. You just sit tight. The Commander wants to have a little chat. The prisoner is ready, sir. I hope you're comfortable. We have a lot to discuss. Well, we'll see about that. First, let me see what we're working with here. Hm. It appears that you have a background in cyber running. Perfect. Information gathering is one of our top priorities around here. I also see that you've mined on Vectera, and now you're with Constellation. You've certainly been quite busy. Oh, and look at that. Right at the bottom of this list is the criminal incident that landed you in my crosshairs. I will, when I'm ready. Now that we have that out of the way, let me introduce myself. My name is Commander Kibwe Ikande, and I'm in charge of this operation for UC Sistev. Are you familiar with what we do? Yes, well, this is your only opportunity to keep yourself out of jail. So I suggest you change your attitude. UC Sistev is a division of the UC Navy. Well, they handle the big picture stuff. We deal with a very particular problem. The Crimson Fleet. That convict is where you enter the picture. in and attacks the Crimson Fleet, we'd have a full-scale war on our hands. That means losses, heavy losses, that the United Colonies can't afford. Not for me, for yourself. Look, I'm going to make this simple. Agree to work for UC Sistev, and together we take down the Crimson Fleet. Refuse, and I tell these guys to throw you into the nearest lockup. Might even tack on an extra few hundred credits to your fine. Of course you have a choice. It's just stacked in my favor. So, what do you say? 
You going to work with me, or should I find someone else? If I didn't think you had a chance, I would have left you in locker. You're just going to have to follow your instincts and trust me. Smart choice. I'm going to have one of my men escort you to the operations center. I strongly suggest that you don't give him any trouble. And don't bother trying to leave the ship. I think you'll find all access to the docking area is fully restricted. Let's go. So, you took the op instead of serving the time. Gonna be the commander's new ball, huh? Still, it makes you wonder, especially with the stories that go around. Like the one about how the fleet deals with informants by lashing them to the hull of a ship. Yes. And then what? slowly letting the air out of their suit. Could you imagine a worse way to go? I know I couldn't. But I wouldn't worry about it. Since the commander handpicked you, I'm guessing you can hold your breath for a really long time, right? Hello. This is as far as I go. Take the lift up to Ops. Commander Ikonde should be waiting for you. Okay, hello. <clears throat> okay, hello. Ah, there you are. Excellent. Now that we've established your level of cooperation with us, I want to introduce you to your new home. This is the operation center of the UC Vigilance. Sysdef's nerve center dedicated to the destruction of the Crimson Fleet. Whether this ship is impressive or not, you're the key element that we've been lacking. We need eyes and ears inside the Crimson Fleet. Someone who can feed us information, evidence, and expose their weaknesses. The catch is that you can't just knock on their front door and ask for an application. Getting inside is going to take some finesse.
I do. Our intelligence has managed to find a possible opening into the Crimson Fleet through Sersha Borden, one of their contacts. She works for the Trade Authority in Sidonia, so you'll be using a container of Aurora we've loaded on your ship to get her attention. Well, it's the best we've got. Once you bluff your way into the Crimson Fleet, then the operation proceeds to evidence gathering. That's where my second-in-command, Lieutenant Gillian Toft, comes into the picture. She'll explain everything you need to know. Eager to get going? Good. Remember, this entire operation rests on your ability to infiltrate the Crimson Fleet and bring us the evidence we need to take them down. At this point, whether you like it or not, you're working for me. Look, before you begin, I want to make something perfectly clear. As an undercover operative for UC Sysdev, you'll be expected to follow our code of conduct and ethics. Allow yourself to stray too far off the path, and you stand a good chance of spiraling out of control. I don't want promises. I'm just asking you to think. Anyway, it's time to hand you over to Lieutenant Toft. She'll brief you about the details of the evidence gathering portion of the operation. Now, get out of here and good luck. That's easy to answer. You don't. We'll be monitoring your activities from the Vigilance, and attempting to keep it within your vicinity. When you feel you've gathered enough evidence, and at the completion of your assignments, head back here for a debrief. Beyond that, you're completely on your own. Good luck. Hey. Yes. What? Yes? Excuse me. Howdy. Hey. All right. We don't have a lot of time, so I need you to listen up. While you're working undercover, it's imperative that you gather as much evidence as possible. If you find any records that look suspicious or incriminating, you bring it to me. Is that understood? You better make it, because Commander Akande cashed in all his chips to get this operation off the ground. I want data slates, computer downloads, handwritten notes. Hell, I'll take anything if it'll get those bastards thrown into the brig. You're damn right I do. That minor skirmish you had with them on Vectera was nothing compared to the death and destruction those pirates leave behind. If you've seen what I've seen, You'd understand why I'm pushing you so hard. Then you'll understand why it's so important that this operation is successful. Anyway, before I let you go, there's just one more thing. Commander Akande has authorized a credit disbursement for each piece of evidence that you return, as compensation for your efforts. Commander Akande came up with the idea. He was concerned you might not help us simply because it was the right thing to do. All right, we've loaded a container of Aurora into your ship's cargo hold. We're also providing you with a sample you can use to tease the goods. We've cleared your ship for launch. Proceed to Sidonia. Make contact with Sirsha Bowden. And with any luck, 
She'll point you to the Crimson Fleet. That should do it. You're dismissed. Not really, no. I've learned to keep my personal experiences separate from the job. Someone on SSN. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate that you care. It's just that I don't feel like now's an appropriate time to be discussing these things. Let's just stick to the job at hand and concentrate on the mission. But, uh, maybe we can talk about it some other time, okay? I'll be here if you have any more questions. I wonder if the Broken Spear is still open. It's the only decent place in town to grab a drink. Spear after a long day. To Mars, they said. The bay is great, they said.
If you're here to buy or sell, you might want to talk to Octai. I'm busy. And by sensitive, I'm guessing you mean something you don't want UC security sticking their noses into. I can probably help you with that. What have you got for me? Hmm. Aurora, huh? Nice. A little too hot to handle, though. What else you got? The Trade Authority turning away contraband. Now I've seen everything. Oh yeah, well, I got some bad news for you, love. This location doesn't buy shit like that when you see security sitting a stone's throw from the front door. Of course, if there's a finder's fee you're offering, I might, well, bend the rules a little bit. You know, it's funny. Suddenly, I do remember someone who might be able to unload that stuff for you. Well, well. It appears she suddenly remembers everything. Hmm, how nice. There's a buddy of mine who runs with the Crimson Fleet. Goes by the name Adler Kemp. If he isn't passed out, you can find him killing the rest of his brain cells at the Broken Spear. Oh, and uh, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. You got something for me? Unless you're here to serve me another drink, you can turn around and walk away. Hey, why don't you say that a little louder? I don't think every single UC guard in Sedonia heard you! Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we can help you with this. If you've got a whole shipment of this stuff, you're going to need to move it fast. But you're going to have to do something for us first. Yeah, well, she isn't running the show here. I am. Well, this is utterly ridiculous. Do we really have to jump through these hoops to get what we need from you? <sighs> Lady, if you want me to move that shipment for your pal here, you're going to do whatever the hell I want. You got that? Now listen up, because I'm not going to repeat myself. I need you to deal with a miner who's racked up a bunch of debt. Probably spent it all on booze, not that I blame him. Either way, I want that money back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on a second. No one said anything about killing. All I said was, I want my money. How you handle that is up to you. His name's Carl Fielding. I think you'll find him wandering around the Deimos Miners' quarters. Don't worry, you can't miss him. Just look for the most miserable looking guy in the entire place. Careful, 
of the railings on the upper levels. It's a long way down. Something I can help you with? Adler Kemp. Who the heck is that? What? Play what games? You're obviously confusing me with someone else. Look, I'm tired. It's been a long day in the mines. I just want to go home, wash off the dust, and relax. This has been fun, though. Uh, hey, now. <laughs> Take it easy there. Let me think about that person you mentioned. Uh, Adler, was it? Hmm? Oh, wait. You mean that Adler? Yeah, sorry. I thought you were talking about someone else. <laughs> I told him I'd pay up next week when Deimos cuts our next profit share check. I'll even bring it to him personally. Sound good? Yeah? What the heck do you want me to do, then? Huh? I... Look, I haven't got a single credit to spare right now. Okay? You can't squeeze blood from a stone. You know? Right? Perhaps he's already been through enough. Holy crap! Really? You'd do that for me? Wow. Uh, I don't even know what to say. Thank you. For everything. And don't worry. I'll never borrow anything from Adler again. I promise. Something for me? There, would you look at that? I knew that bum was holding out on me. He going to be a problem anymore? Or did he get the message? Nice, nice. You're kind of a natural at this. Leaning on deadbeats comes easy to you. I like that. You know, if you like this kind of work, I can get you more. A lot more. You think you can handle running with my, uh, associates? That's what I'm talking about. I like your style. All right, I'll call ahead and get a hold of Neva Mora. She's second to the big boss himself. Head out to Europa. You'll find her there. I suggest you listen to whatever she has to say. Oh, and I've taken care of that Aurora shipment for you too. Don't spend all that cash in one place. We should have a talk. When you have a talk, please.
that the Crimson Fleet has to offer, joining them might be a terrible mistake. I've been tracking Rick for months. He's making it tough, not gonna lie. He changes his location and identity so often, it's costing me a small fortune just to keep tabs. But you know what? It's worth every damn cred. He's made me look like a fool in front of Delgado, and I'm gonna have his head on a pike. Rake used to run with the fleet. Hell, I'm the one who vouched for him in the first place. Back then he had a different name and a different identity. He was a damn good earner too, brought in a ton of creds. Everything was fine until he wanted out, so he ran. And nobody, I mean, nobody, runs away from the fleet.
was afraid of that. Look, we are not built for combat. What is it you want exactly? Something I'd like to discuss. Remember our last conversation, when you told me the artifacts made you feel like raw energy was coursing through your veins? Well, it got me thinking, so I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described, doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. Uh, unfortunately, no. Other than you and Barrett, there were no records of direct encounters with the artifacts. I have to admit, though, I did get more than a bit sidetracked reminiscing about old times. Really? I'm surprised that I haven't. After reading those journals, all of the pleasant memories of my time spent with Arja just started flooding back. Yes, absolutely. I, I didn't mean to compare. Those were just... Oh, I don't know. Different times. Aja was the one that taught me the ropes at Constellation, and took me under her wing as her protégé. Yeah, I thought so too. That's why I adopted her methods. You know, Aja and I logged quite a few interesting discoveries together. But it was the journey itself that I'll never forget. Exactly. For me, it was all about the quieter moments. There was... Nothing quite like sitting back and watching space bend while listening to Aja spin vivid stories to fill the time. Oh, I find that sort of cozy isolation the best way to really get to know someone. At this point, I'd say you've graduated from protégé and moved up the ladder. A bit. You know, all this talk about Aja reminds me that my time with her was a gift. I... miss her dearly. I respected her, and I considered her a dear friend, but we weren't in love. Had that been true, I would have resigned my post and moved to Parima 2 instead of remaining at Constellation. Come to think of it, if we're ever out that far, perhaps we could pay her a visit, and I could make proper introductions. Well, 
But I don't expect you to be a carbon copy of Aja. Just be yourself. You see, it's clear that we share the same hunger to discover what's out there. And that, well, that's what intrigues me about you. I... I don't know if I deserve to be that close to anyone right now. If you knew about the things that I've done, the way my life's unfolded, I think your opinion of me might change. Please, give me some time. I... I... I, I have to go. I am not sure what to make of you being here. If you wanted to kill us, you could have done that from your ship. If you wanted our cargo, we could have jettisoned it. I guess I should just stop talking and let you say your piece. That is true. Which means you don't want somebody to know what you are really up to. Now, do you mind telling us what this is all about? You really do not know which one of us is Rake, do you? And you do not seem to care either, which makes me think you really want to save him. Okay, I have idea. We can strike his name from Manifest, make it so he was never on board. Then, when we dock, we will leave him on this ship and deliver him to another port. That is fair. We do not want any part of the fleet. Is that all right with you, Austin? Do I have a choice? It does not appear you do. Well then, it is agreed. You go back to your ship and we will make sure Rake was never on ours. And in case any of your handlers get suspicious, here. We had an extra crate of supplies loaded, in case one got damaged. This should be proof you were not here to bargain. So now what? You're gonna put me in a sysdef prison? Be careful around the fleet. They talk about family, but it's just a bunch of crap. So you're the fleet's new dog, huh? on deck.
control, but it definitely went faster after you jumped into the fight. Now tell me about the Ragana. Give me some good news, then we can go celebrate. Huh. No kidding. That'll make Delgado happy, seeing as our hands are clean. I would have preferred if you hadn't left witnesses behind, but at least you got the job done. Anyway, you wanted into the Crimson Fleet? Well, you're in. Yep, it's that simple. Hope this business with Rakes taught you something. Because I'm about to stick my neck out and vouch for you. If you screw up, and I wind up looking like an asshole, I'm gonna send someone after you. We clear? You better stow that crap before you make me change my mind. And now that you know the deal, it's time to see what you signed up for. I'm gonna upload the coordinates for our headquarters in the Crick system. Spacers call it the key, the fleet calls it home. Head out there as soon as you can. Don't keep me waiting long. Time to get this ship moving. Commander Ikande wants to see you. Follow me. I had a friend on the Rakana. Wherever the Crimson Fleet we'll goes, to see we'll next follow. Time shortly. Back in basic training, I had the record for fleet kills. First mission in the books and no casualties. Good work. We got the message from the Ragana about Austin Rick. We had him dropped off at a separate port, off the books. Suffice to say, he's got a lot to answer for. That's a smart line to follow. Part of this role you're playing means having to make hard choices. Just remember not to lose yourself in the part. I'll do my part to make certain that doesn't happen, Commander. Oh, one more thing before we move on. For transparency's sake, you should know we were the ones that hired Ecliptic to attack Neva's ship. There was concern after what happened with the Regana that you might have trouble earning Neva's trust. Coming to her rescue, ensure that would not be a problem. Ah, so I take it you have good news. Were you able to join the fleet? Then it worked. You're in. Sounds like everything is going as expected. Now it's time for the next phase of the mission. Our intel on Searsha was correct. After we received reports on your interaction with Adler Kemp, we picked up on your rendezvous with Neva Mora. Our files indicate she's second in command, so getting on a good side will ensure you get into the Crimson Fleet.
A woman has a record that could stretch across Seoul and back. She started young as one of Neon's street rats and worked her way up to second in command. She's a force to be reckoned with, so don't underestimate her. Yes, you pass your first test and you're still alive. But before we get too confident, that either means she suspects nothing, or she intends to make an example of you later. Just remember, these are ruthless criminals, so don't let your guard down. And their ruthlessness is only surpassed by their cunning. You should proceed with caution, regardless of how well you think you've ingratiated yourself. So what's next for you on Neva's agenda? Excellent. If you're heading to the Key, I assume you'll be meeting Delgado soon. Delgado is the leader of the Crimson Fleet. I have a profile here with some information on his background. You'll want to know the individual cadences of every member of the fleet, but Delgado's most of all. Agreed. The last thing we need is to infiltrate the fleet, only to be kicked out because we've underestimated one of their people. I don't disagree, but it's important to know your enemy and the best way to defeat them. In any case, now that you're with the fleet, you'll be operating independently. We will shadow you eventually, but we'll need to maintain our distance for now, especially while you're on the key. This will also give us time to bolster our defenses, should we need to engage with the fleet in the future. Sir, on that note, shall we begin implementing the upgrade to our shields? Immediately, Lieutenant. Notify the engineers and relay the information to the crew. I hope your entry into the fleet has overcome any doubts you may have had regarding your mission. It certainly increased my estimates on success. Keep up the good work. We'll expect further reports. Dismissed. We don't have a full map of the fleet's roster. The members change too quickly. Things are progressing rather quickly. I'm sure the commander is pleased. Good luck on the key. We got a wager going on. Thank you. 
40% of 10 versus 30. You wanted 4K, you got 4K. Not my problem. If you're stealing from me, you bet your ass it's your problem. Ah! You kidding me? Way to make a mess in front of my new rook. Hey, steal from me and get caught. Better off dead. Sounds like you did the fleet a favor. Now toss this body out of an airlock before it turns into a damn air freshener. The hell took you so long? Forget how to grab jump or something? Maybe for you. I'd rather shove a shotgun up my nose than remember the face of every low-life rook who passes through this station. But, all that aside, you made it. So now, you get to hear a nifty history lesson. Pencils ready? Good. This floating scrap heap you're standing on is called the Keep. Used to be an old UC military star station, and now it's the fleet's base of operations. Might look a little beat up on the outside, but we keep it together. You think? And that's only part of it. I'll let Delgado fill you in on the whole story. He tells it better anyway. But I can give you the short version while we walk the station. Story time? Hmm, how delightful. Anyway, I'll tell you all about the key. But it's better if I show you too. Follow me. All right, history time. So, the key is in orbit around Suvorov. That's the very same ice ball where the United Colonies built a supermax prison they call the Lock. The UC is so clever. Supermax prison, Lock, key, uh, cute, huh? got everything the fleet needs right here. Of course, you've got to pay for it. Remember, on the key, credits are key. What the hell is this? All right, all right, hang on, Nev. Before you get pissed, I've got my hands full. Jasmine, sweetie, I'm trying to give a tour here. So you want to tell me why those damn doors are sealed? It's called a malfunction, you know. That thing I spend most of my day dealing with, believe me, my people are on it. Have a little faith for once. Aww. And you always, Angel. This here's Jasmine. You need anything for your ship, she's got you covered. We'll hit up the depot next since these doors have given out on us. So anyway, we were talking about the luck. About a hundred years ago, the prisoners down there rioted and took over the place stealing some ships, they were actually able to make it up here and took over the key. About time you brought us new blood, neighbor. I was getting tired of trading with the same old faces. You're just ticked everyone's getting wise to your ridiculous prices, Alutra. Anyway, welcome to the depot, Rook, where you'll be lucky if these blood-sucking leeches don't bleed you completely dry. Whoa, whoa. It's not our fault that people don't appreciate how much it costs to get untraceable merchandise onto the key. Neva's just whining because she thinks she lost a ton of cash selling us a shipment of gear. She should have done her homework. Yeah, sure, laugh it up. I remember that next time I need something from you cheapskates. Let's move on. <clears throat> Back to my story. After the liberated prisoners grabbed the key, they established it as a base of operations and began pirating the spaceways. That was how the Crimson Fleet began. 
Of course, Jasper Crick's had a lot to do with all that, but, uh, we'll get to him later. Rook, meet Zuri, queen of the rare exports. If I don't have it, you don't need it. Neuro amps, blueprints. Hit her up and she'll take care of you. Speaking of which, you still owe me for that last purchase, Neva. It's like five figures. Don't make me collect it the hard way. <laughs> the hard way? Oh no. Rook, protect me from Zuri's vengeance. Enough of the bullshit, Zuri. I'll pay you when I pay you. Deal with it. Got a problem with that? Take it up with the boss. My prices the right, may be high, got but these the goods ain't exactly easy to I'm find. I'm sure you know the deal there. He'll buy pretty much anything, no matter how hot. Then we got our med bay on the left, run by the one and only Samina Mizra. She'll patch you up, if you've got the money. We don't run any free clinics up in here, you don't? Okay, this is our final stop. Over there, you've got the last Nova, where bog serves watered down drinks at ridiculously exorbitant prices. And right here is the most important place on the entire station. The Reckoner's Corps, run by the incomparable Shinya Voss. Another new Rook, Neva? I can't believe Delgado still lets you recruit, given what happened with the last one. You mean Austin Wraith? It's been taken care of, all right? I don't like loose ends, and this Rook is the one who tied it off. Perhaps next time you'll try to be a bit more discerning regarding your choices. It's far more cost-effective. Yeah, yeah, love you too, darling. Anyway, Shinya handles our lifeblood. The money. We call him our Reckoner, but if you ask me, he's actually a pain in the ass. And Neva will slit your throat if she thinks you'll bleed creds. Go to hell, boss. Take care of our new friend here, or I'll find a way to pull the pin on that little party popper in your chest. Anyway. Shinya will get you set up in our system. I've got real work to do. Once you're done, head upstairs and I'll introduce you to the boss. Time for a proper introduction. I am Shinya Voss, the official reckoner for the Crimson Fleet. And since Neva so thoughtfully mentioned it, yes, this is a bomb embedded in my chest. And no, I'll never know the meaning of the word humble. In fact, I find Delgado's idea of a security measure to be quite empowering. That's amusing. I don't think I've heard that one before. Oh wait, yes I have. You might as well dispense with all the stupid jokes. I've been hearing them for years. Since I oversee the bulk of transactions and maintain all accounts for the fleet, I'm a prime target for information. Should our enemies capture me or I grew any semblance of a moral conscience, you might consider me the greatest threat we have. For Delgado, the bomb grants peace of mind and a certain degree of safety. It's why he's the boss. Of course, I'm not the first Reckoner to bear a bomb under my ribcage, but Delgado was smart enough to continue the tradition. Now, let me get you set up. A moment while I convene with the core. Thanks to advanced modifications even Dugin would envy, I can interface directly with our mainframe and the Galbank network. This allows me to move and clean credits faster and more efficiently than any run-of-the-mill cyber runner. There. You're done. All you need now is Delgado's blessing, and you'll be one of us. Yes! About time you shut up and listened. Thanks to our relations with contacts across the galaxy, we always have a steady stream of jobs available. 
I've granted you all the necessary permissions to access these listings at any time using the computers that surround the core. If Neva's chosen wisely, we certainly will. Now, I believe that covers all I have to say. So you can run along to Delgado. Take the elevator to the upper level. You should be able to find your way from there, I hope. All right, listen up. You can all stop complaining. Atrium to cargo bay doors have been repaired. Oh, and you're welcome. So, now that we are all here, it's time to get down to business. The two of you are the only rooks that have made the latest cut. The rest, well, let's just say they won't be joining us ever again. Neva's willing to put her neck on the line and vouch for you, which means you've got what it takes to join the Crimson Fleet. You'd better not disappoint, or you'll find yourself answering to me, personally. All right, let's get started here. When you sign up with the Crimson Fleet, you're in it for the long haul. No one quits. No one retires. The only way out is death. You stay loyal, or you pay the consequences. Fleet before friends. Fleet before family. Fleet before yourself. None of us like to follow orders. That is why we all ended up here. You don't have to like it, Brook. You have to just shut up and do it. Follow? If I were you, I would listen carefully to Neva's advice. She has handled those that could not follow orders on more than one occasion. Can we get on with this? I want to get drunk at the last Nova. I am impressed. That is the first intelligent thing you have said this entire time, Mathis. Since you two seem so eager to move forward, let's get to your next job. Pack your cold weather gear, Rooks. Where we are going, you're going to need it. Oh, God, don't tell me you're dragging him down to Suvaral for another one of your little initiation runs. Ten Johns to the surface, twelve dead rooks. You think by now you would have given up on that goddamn campfire story? Crix's legacy is no story, neighbor. We've got fresh eyes in the fleet. And if these two want to impress, they're going to help me search those ruins. I hope you're right, Dale. That new code we grabbed for the lot cost us a ton of credits. And a decent captain. This initiation, as Neva calls it, is your chance to see where it all began. On Suvorov with Jasper Griggs. Griggs led the riots that gave birth to the Crimson Fleet. And if his legacy is still out there, we're going to be the ones to find it. Before Crix left the fleet, he left a message talking about a major score. One that would set up the fleet to be a big player in the settled systems. Somewhere down the line, they started calling it Crix's legacy. And everyone who's tried to find it has wound up empty-handed, missing, or dead. If we're gonna beat those odds, we'll first need a lead. And I would wager we will find one on Suvorov. Dale's leaving out the best part. That this whole search is based on a handful of words on a very old slate. Crix left a lot of big talk on that recording. And not a lot of facts. Some of us believe in it more than others. <laughs> Don't listen to her. When we get our hands on Crix's legacy, the fleet will be operating at a completely different level. We will become more than a match for UC Sistef. Exactly. Now you're beginning to understand. Okay, enough discussion. 
we have got a lot of work to do. To that end, the next stop is the lock. I've had Jazz feed the coordinates into your ship's computer. Since Mathis doesn't have a ship, he's going to ride with me. I'll see you down there, Rook. Don't keep me waiting.